Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. It is the match preview Manchester United versus Everton. Jack and myself are going to have a look at this one. Manchester United away. Is it more psychological, this one? Do we look at this one and go, can't win this, only won there twice in 30 odd years in the Premier League, no chance? Or is, uh, should we look at it a completely different way? The psychological factor is definitely a massive part of this. You know, when you're looking at that record, you're looking at a massive part of that time scale is the Man United team that will win in the league every year, mm -hmm. winning everything under Sir Alex Ferguson. And you know, even a little bit after that as well, for the majority of that time, they had a better team than Everton. Mm -hmm. They have a better team than Everton at the moment as well, which is the other half of that argument. Yeah. Look, Man United, when... You go away to Old Trafford and you're looking at that record, beat them twice in the entirety of the Premier League. You're playing the badge and you're not playing the team, aren't mm. you? You're looking at the mental side of things and the players will be aware of that record because we've had players in this team over that period, haven't we? Especially the ones who've been here longer. Yeah. That being said, Man United's team isn't the greatest and we've seen teams of similar ability to Everton go yeah. to Old Trafford in recent weeks and win there as well. So... It's certainly a winnable game. What makes this difficult for Everton is it's a game that Everton could really do with winning. You wouldn't normally look at Man United away and go, look, we need to win here. But that's been brought on by Everton not winning easier games at home where they really should be winning. Yeah. And that's a consequence the manager and the players have got to deal with now, which goes to a team that, yeah, you can talk about they're not what they were, they're not what they should be. They are still better than us. We've got to go yeah. away to a team that are better than us and try and get a result. Yeah, it's interesting because their form at home, they're only the 10th best team at home, which is mad for Manchester United, by the way. And I think it speaks volumes of about where they are. Their away form is 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 what uh, has them in European positions. And oh, yeah, listen, an outside chance of a Champions League space, if a Champions League space goes to fifth this year, um, you know, 22 points picked up at home. Everton have picked up 18 points away from home. So if you look at it from that that kind of way, there's not too much difference. But it has always been the psychological thing with me, and it builds up over time. And obviously, Martin is going there just over 10 years ago, broke that up. But then it started back again. And we listen, we picked up some good draws there. Obviously, 4-4 four, four when Ferguson was still there. We've picked up, you know, we had the 1-1 one, one under Koeman recently, which... You know, we were winning till till quite late. We had the um the Townsend one um of late as well under Benitez and we had the three three in the COVID season under Carlo. So we've gone there and got a few decent results. But to me, I always think people look at this one on the piece of paper and you know on the fixtures and think, Oh, United away. It's almost like you've written it off before you start. I think that's why I wanted to start with it. Because I think we do that too much as fans, I think. And I think I don't know. This can't get into the mind of a footballer. Is Old Trafford still that big, intimidating place? Um, I'm not sure it is because I just think that for a lot of teams now, they look at it as a place to go and actually turn the crowd, you know, turn all the day trippers off and all that kind of thing. And, and obviously, Fulham very recently have shown if you go there and okay, if you if you stay in the game, help it helps if you take the lead first. If you stay in the game, make it difficult for them, make them more and more anxious, then anything can happen. And of course, Man United did get an equaliser against Fulham, but then Fulham went down the other end and scored. So um, it is possible to go there if you if you can see out a few difficult spells, use your set piece as well. It is it is possible to go in there and get a win. Now you mentioned the Martinez team, and I appreciate we're talking about a completely different yeah. team there, but we're speaking about the mental side of this. Mm. That Martinez team that went there was brave. Yeah, They got on the ball and they tried to play a bit of nice football and, mm. you know, we launched a lot of attacks. And, you know, Oviedo scored. He scored from open play. That was Oviedo making a run into the box as well. That's something we don't really see yeah. from this team. The full-backs making those big overlapping runs. You mentioned the Fulham game. Fulham, again, brave, getting mm. on the ball. A lot of times Fulham picked up the ball in the middle of the park and just drove with it. Didn't go backwards to set up a long ball. They had a Wobi and the likes getting on the ball in the middle of the park and just driving at that defence, exploiting that split, uh, exploiting that space. Yeah, Man United are the team that gave up chances. 
Everton are a team that don't make that many chances. We'd like mm. to sit back and, you know, we're not counter-attacking team as such, but what we do is all based around our defence. I understand we're not going to completely compromise that and completely change our style for one game because it's what the manager knows. It's what these players have been working under for a year. We need to take our opportunities to be brave in this game because United give up chances. Yeah. They struggle when they've got someone running at them. And I think if you sit back for too long, you do invite moments of their quality to set through. We can speak about the teams, not what we associate a Man United team with. Mm. They've got players like Garnacho, like we've seen against us, capable of massive moments. Marcus Rashford had a pretty poor game against Man City, but he's shown he's capable of moments. They've got players like that. If we sit back and try and hold out for a nil-nil, more than likely a United player, superior quality, will show through at one point or another. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Manchester United are, in many ways, there for the for the taking on Saturday, just with their injuries. Um, they've got a lot of top players out, and they've got a lot of doubts. And that means players, if they do play, could be playing strapped up, and or other players coming in last minute to take their places. And Everton have to expose that because we've got a pretty full squad bar. Dan Juma and Adissa Garner Gay, probably, you know, the manager said he's doubtful, but he could make it. Um, and we, listen, the other side of that is obviously fatigue, tiredness, where we are, as where we are. But Manchester United has just lost the last couple of games after having a really good run. And yes, when they've got their best 11, it's a decent 11 and it can it can have a go at anyone, you know, whether it beats them or not. And it, it will beat a lot of teams in this league through sheer quality through moments, not through, I don't think there's any kind of great tactical knocks behind it or or shape, but through counter-attack of football and individuals, which we saw at Goodison Park, because to be fair, we had lots of chances that night, um, but we've been sucker punched in the first couple of minutes with an absolute, one of the greatest goals of a Premier League era. Um, and then we've been caught out in the second half with a penalty, and it was just one of those nights, but... I think if we approach this the right way, I think the manager spoke about it in his press conference about you've got to play well first. I think if we play well, we have if we can create a few opportunities, obviously set pieces, but the quarter I think could again be huge to the, in this game. I think I think there's a real opportunity to get something out of this game. Yeah, I think the midfield's the main part mm. of it as well. I think they have a disjointed midfield. Yeah. So they've got the young lad, Mainu, in there, yeah. who's done brilliantly, but he's a kid. Yeah. Casemiro doesn't get around the pitch like he used to as mm. well. And then after that, you're looking at attacking options, aren't you? So it's not the most functional midfield. Yeah. We can get the likes of Onana in there, they're getting his foot on the ball and dictating mm. the game. You've got James Garner covering the yards. And then you can get to court, right? you can pick up that ball and potentially carry us up the pitch. Yeah like we see in the Fulham midfield that do them when they beat them. I think that's a key area as well, and that's an area of the pitch that can only excel if we give them licence to as well, to not sit back too much, give them the freedom and the allowance to get on the ball a bit more yeah. than we might normally like to away from home. Yeah, I think obviously like last season that we played such a high line against them, I've no idea what, why we were doing it. And um, Ben Goffey kept on getting caught out on all, on all, all, all day, basically. Um, I think we have to sit deep and we have to encourage them to come on to us because they, as I said, they love counter-attack and football. Uh, we love not having the ball. We saw it at Brighton. You know, you, we were, we were allowed the opposition to have a lot of the ball. And I think, you know, Brighton was, a, was a, again, one where you let them have the ball. But what, what can you create? What are you going to do? Obviously, if someone like Bruno Fernandes gets hold of the ball, you've got to be quick to get out and make sure you stop him. But I just think it's about frustrating them, you know, to half 12 kickoff, their fans are going to just be like, we all know what those kickoffs are like when, when things don't start well and you don't get off the edge of your seat. They can, they can just be a little bit monotonous. So for us, I think it's just about getting there. First 20 minutes, like I think we do in most games, just get a feel for it, don't give anything stupid away, and then grow into the game. And I, I, I genuinely, I'm not worried that it's Manchester United. I understand there is a difference in quality. But we have proved it this season that our, uh, our, you know, the way we play away from home is is not to be sniffed at. We do have a good way of playing, and it it it, it will get us points. Yeah, it's just what we have to remember, isn't it? Play the team, not mm -hmm. the badge. 
there is a quality gap there as well, but they're missing some key players yeah. as well. You know, Hoyland, who's been in great form mm -hmm. for them the last few weeks, might not be available as well. And I think that's massive for us as well because, you know, their upturn in form coincided with his rise in yeah. form as well. And he was really starting to learn to play through him as well. Martial might be available, which we know is record yeah. against us. And it's not healthy and... I think regardless of the results at the weekend, uh, if he plays, we need to find a way of at least shutting him down and getting that sorted out. Yeah, I mean, listen, we played against plenty of players who've got great records, but it's diminishing returns, isn't it, after a while. And um, if he does come back from injury, you've just got to look after him the best you can. And that's it, isn't it? I'd rather be facing him than facing Hoyland. I know that. Forget records and anything else. Again, you have to play the player, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I'd rather records. be up against him. Forget the name. I mean, we saw Origi come on against Forrest when we played down. I think we all bottled ourselves. But it's diminishing returns um, after a while. So that doesn't worry me as much as, as I said, having their best players. And if they haven't got their best players, then there, sh there shouldn't be any excuses, certainly with that away form, the way it is. Um, let's just have a look at the Manchester United team from the last game out against Manchester City, of course. Um, where they, yeah, they were, they weren't great, were they? Um, they weren't great at all on that night. And again, the way the team set up there is, is you know, I mean, Johnny Evans, who apparently has got a knock. Um, Rashford, who apparently he'll be out, went off injured. Um, and then you look at the midfield, like like said Casemiro, like you said about his legs. There's not. There's not loads to scare us in there, is there? There's not loads there. Bruno Fernandes has obviously scored his first goal for Manchester United against Devon. But you look at them and you think, a good plan can take care of that if you if everyone does their job the right way. Yeah, well, they're a team with some levels of quality, but they're a very disjointed team, especially at the moment with injuries. Mm. And as you think nine times out of ten an organised team beats an unorganised better team as well it's yeah. just about having our plan and sticking to it and executing it well and like I say they're more likely to have a moment of magic where they pick something out yeah. of nothing and it could be against the run play but they've done that to us already and it, that will obviously be a factor as well and I think that could potentially be a game deciding moment for Man United because I don't think We'll afford them a bucket load of chances. I think we'll get a decent amount of chances ourselves. We know what our finishing's been like the last few weeks as well. So yeah. I think shutting them down, not allowing them these moments where someone like Fernandez can have a 20-yard yeah. shot, because we know they're more likely to take those sort of chances than we are. Yeah, he is the, he is the one who genuinely in the past against Evan has, has made the difference. Um, let's just have a little look at the stat pack before we go any further. This Saturday at Old Trafford, 12.30pm kickoff, Everton take on Manchester United in the Premier League. Everton and Manchester United have met a total of 63 times in the Premier League. Only 10 wins go into Toffees, 40 to Man United and 13 draws. Only two of those 10 wins from Everton have come at Old Trafford. The last time Everton beat Manchester United was a 1-0 victory on the 9th of April 2022. The reverse fixture this season, Manchester United beat Everton 3-0 at Goodison Park. A stunning bicycle kick from Ghana showed to open the scoring. So far this season, Manchester United sit 6th. They have won 14 games, drawn 2 and lost 11. They have kept 7 clean sheets this season. Everton sit 16th. They have won 8 games, drawn 7 and lost 12. But they have had a 6-point seduction. Everton haven't won a game in the Premier League since December against Burnley. They have kept 8 clean sheets this season. In the goals chart, Rasmus Hoyland and Scott McTominay are joint top scorers with seven goals each. Everton's Abdullah Dekori follows behind with six goals. Most creative player out of the two teams is Bruno Fernandes with a total of six assists. Dwight McNeil has five. You just see the amount of games they've lost as well. It's incredible, isn't it? Um, losing that many games just shows why why they can't sort of close that gap to try and get top four because it is that it's the losing the games. Well, let's. Let's have a little look at the man we've picked out to be the danger man, Scott McTominay, who uh, scored against us last season. 24 goals, uh, games, 7 goals, XG of 5.01, 1 assist and an XA of 0.29. And as you can see, 
all over the pitch. Um, he is one of those players. He's a player we'd love, isn't he? He's the kind of he's an Everton player, Scott McTominay. He really is more than a Manchester United player. He's an Everton player. Yeah, definitely. He's a player who, if you know, if he weren't at Man United and therefore didn't have a massive price tag attached to him, he, he's a player you'd love to bring into Everton. Mm. He's a workhorse. He's very much in the decor mould of midfielder. Yeah. I think maybe there's a bit more off the ball in his role than Decore does, but you know he's a midfielder who quite often has been miscast as a, a deep midfielder, a mm. defensive midfielder, but actually does his best yeah. work running off the striker, late runs into the box and picking up goals. And he's been massive for Man United this season. He's been underappreciated mm. at Man United for a number of years, but in difficult times he's been someone who's stepped up forward and you know you're seeing on the heat map here he's where the distance he covers he's a massive part of that midfield massively underrated as well in the grand scheme of things i think as well but he's someone who's always good value for a goal especially with hoyland potentially out as well that'd make him man united best scorer on the pitch yeah yeah he's done we need to look out for and it's one we need to sign at the end of the game as <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Slip my contract. Yeah. No, I mean, we picked him because obviously with the injuries and everything, we're, we're, we're honestly unsure who will start for them. And Hoyland would be the one, but uh, McTom McTominay feels more appropriate at this stage. But let's have a little look at the Everton team that started in the defeat against West Ham last week. Um, it'll be it'll, it'll be interesting, only because it you know no one no one's coming into that side. Well, the you know the manager will make decisions. There's no one coming in uh, to take any of the places organically. You know, there's no one waiting there because 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 of just a guy and a guy. But certainly the right back spot and obviously the centre forward are the two way of talking about. I mean, would would you continue with Ben Godfrey or have you seen enough maybe to now to say let's change it up and maybe try and get James Coleman back into the side? I understand he's performing a different role than he was when we last went there as well, but his performance last time we were at Old Trafford still gives me the occasional nightmare as well. I wouldn't want to put him in against a team who do like to counter attack yeah. as well. And we don't know who's going to be on that left wing for Man mm -hmm. United, you know, with the injuries they've got and such, if Rashford's not available. Yeah. I think Seamus, actually, he's the best sort of jack of all trades right back we've got. He's the best right back we've got, but he's also probably the most well rounded. In sense, you know, you look at Ben Godfrey, okay, he's the fastest, but he's certainly weak going forward. Patterson to yeah. put a decent ball in, he's shaky defensively. Coleman, you know what you're getting in every department, and if we don't know who we're going to be up against on that left flank as well, I think we'd appreciate having him there because we'd back him comfortably against whoever he's going to be against on that left-hand side. Yeah, I think I, think I might be in favour of Seamus now coming back into the side and just... just just giving us that bit of not only the leadership, but he knows how to play the role. I watched Ben last week and the the cross for the second goal. I don't think it's been talked about enough of how little he did to try and stop that ball coming into the box. And what we've seen as well is his heading is is poor. I mean, the two goals, header goals that we've conceded as well, they were pretty much his man and. I mean, I don't think he's done a bad job. I just think if you're looking for fine margins, I just look at him and think, yeah, it's it might be one to consider. But what do you think about also the centre forward position? Because of course, I'm not saying your better will score and he's got the shirt, but it depends how we play and if we need an out ball, I'm not sure better is that man. But that'll be maybe from more of a tactical point of view than than a you know looking at the two strikers in isolation. Another way of looking at the tactical view, though, is if you're looking to stretch United and really mm. drive at United, and if, you know, Decore or Onan that are going to pick that ball up and carry it, having someone who makes the runs like Beto does, I think would be beneficial as well. I think Dom is a little bit more static in his movements, mm. not necessarily because of his game, but how we ask him to play when he's on the pitch. I think having Beto to take a man with him, maybe freeze up Decore to try and carry that ball through the middle a bit more than... He scored last week, which is more than Dom has going from at the moment. I prefer Dom overall to Beto. I've been quite open about that. But Beto scored. Yeah, recently. yeah. Got Dom hasn't. And I think when you've been looking for a striker to score a goal for so long, when one eventually does, I think they have to at least get the next yeah. game. Yeah, no, you're right. I think maybe you have to, you have to maybe even put that tactical stuff to a side and just, just look at it and say, he's, he's got the goal and... This or the guy wants to come, you know, you've waited now, you've had your, and you've took your chance to score the goal. 
And that's how football sometimes just has to work. You know, if you get out all the numbers and all the XGs and all the stats, and I mean, Dom's XG is not great anyway, but you look at all that. And some, but sometimes you just have to go, who scored last game? Who who gives who gives the crowd a bit of a buzz? You, sometimes that's how simple football can be at times. Um, but we'll wait and see, see what happens. You know, manager will pick, pick the team and we'll find out at half 11 on on uh, Saturday morning. So there you go. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, are you worried? Are you, you know, or do you think this is a great opportunity to, for Everton to get some points that maybe other people aren't expecting us to get? Because they're the best points when no one expects you to get them. When no one expects you to get them and you go and get them and everyone's like, oh, I had them down for a loss in that game. Because, of course, we need to start picking up some points. Um, and we haven't got another game now for, for three weeks, have we? So that let us know. A high note. Yeah. Let us know your thoughts in the comments on this one. And, uh, yeah, it'll be a very, very important game for us. Make sure to give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. You want more great videos. Join us over on Toffee TV Premiere, where there's no ads on any of the videos or on any of the podcast daily live exclusive videos there too link is in the description qr code coming on the screen now see you later